everyone, it's Chappies Crypto here with a video update just in regards to where I'm up with my trading at the moment. I haven't done a trading video for a while and for people that have followed some of my other videos know I've tried out a few different strategies. Um, this particular strategy I've been really focused on probably for the last six or seven weeks or so. So I've been pretty focused on it. I came across and I'll just share where it's from. Um, obviously my goal with my trading videos is to share the tools that I use. So this video is gonna just go through some more of that information. However, I came across this YouTube video um, channel a while ago, a guy called the Ins Inner Circle Trader. Um, <clears throat> look him up on YouTube, he's got a whole bunch of videos. Uh, a little bit controversial, there's some few people on YouTube that for whatever reason don't seem to like the guy. Um, but personally, so far, um, I've, I've found his information to be, to be brutally honest, flawless. Um, it's an amazing approach really really simple process you basically aren't using any indicators which i love uh, peel it right back to the basics and um, it's working really well so far um, i'm still learning the process um, but one of the cool things about his video series is he's got a playlist at the moment called the 2022 ict mentorship this quite seriously is unbelievable totally free um, he goes through his whole approach you start from number one and just work your throat through the way to the videos um, I'd highly recommend not not just watching them and just you know not thinking about it just go straight to the next one watch the video do what he says in the videos once he if he gives you some suggestions of things to try or some things to back test or you know, do some journaling or whatever um, highly recommend to watch these I've actually watched all the videos except for the last one or two two and sometimes three times just to make sure I've really understood the approach um, but seriously this guy is unbelievable I cannot believe he's giving this stuff away for free um, and one of the things that someone shared with me a long time ago is there is so much free amazing content on YouTube um, and this one uh, next level so I highly recommend 2022 ICT mentorship um, and it, yeah really enjoy it however so I've used his strategy and I'm using it exclusively on futures contracts so I've done a few other videos on futures. I was trading crypto for a better part of 13 months and I moved across to futures probably six or seven weeks ago now. And I've been really enjoying the journey. So this is how I have my chart set up. Um, I've got it set to the, I focus pretty much on the NASDAQ, uh, the micro e-mini. I've only got a very small trading account. So I, you know, my account balance started at about a thousand dollars. I'm up and down, I'm actually down a little bit at the moment, however, um, I'm still very much just learning the system, making sure I, I still get caught up with the emotions of trading. However, um, yeah, I just wanted to show people my trading from last night as an example of, of what can happen when you're trading the futures. So I also have another layout on my um, trading view as well, which is a daily view. Um, and what I've done on this one is I've got the four major futures contracts that tend to follow each other. And the reason we do this, or the reason I've done this is, although I've been pretty focused on the NASDAQ, um, you'll find that the actual all of the all of the futures contracts, particularly um, these ones, they, they tend to um, they, they really effectively mimic each other. But what what you'll find sometimes is that you might see a setup on Nasdaq and won't see a, a setup a setup on the S and P 500. Or alternatively, you'll see it trading a similar way, but a setup might not come on the Nasdaq where the setup may come in the S S and P. So it's just. I, d I personally, I have this as set to the daily chart, so I'm looking at the S&P, or the ES as referred, the Dow, as well as the E-mini Russell. Um, so in, interestingly, if you look at these um, particular charts, you'll notice that, you know, very, very similar behaviors. The market comes down like this, market comes like this. Funny how all that works, like that. But you'll notice though when you look at this that there's been a you know there's a lot of movement from there to there whereas over here on the uh, on russell it's not quite as big a movement so although they follow a similar sort of pattern um they're not they don't necessarily move in exactly the same way when you get down to the fine details uh, anyway that's so i've got my daily chart set up then now that's i've got that set as a continuous contract so when you're searching for your um, information in trading view um for this daily chart i just use a continuous contract it's not it's not exactly the same price as the day-to-day -day, you know current futures contract you might be trading however um, I found that just to give you a bit of an overall view of where the market's generally headed so I look at this to sort of help me start to form my daily bias and if I come back to my main chart setup and on the main chart setup I've got a 15 minute you notice up here I've got this, the top left hand corner is a 15 minute um, I come across there this is a five minute you notice up here sorry you notice up, the, up at the top here that's my five minute chart if I come down here, this is a three minute, and you come down here as a one minute. So I've got all um, of these four time frames 
showing. The other thing as I sometimes will do is when I'm doing my initial setup, I'll actually move to the top left hand corner. I'll, I'll set set that to a daily chart just initially and I'll, I'll reset the chart and I'll do this to form my daily bias. So this is the setup I was looking at last night and I'll explain what I've got on the chart in a second. But last night when I was looking at this, I was trying to get a bit of a feel for where the market was going to head. And if you wanna understand some of these things, I'm still struggling a little bit with making sure I wrap my head around how to form my daily bias. However, when I looked at this last night, you can see here that the price had moved, I mean, this is a daily chart, so the price had moved like this over the last couple of weeks up to this high point. So for me, this is a bit of a range we've been trading within. Uh, it's gonna come down here, which it has done. And if you actually use the FIB tool, and, and one of the nice things about um, the way that the ICT trader guy uses the FIB tool, um, you don't have to get totally complicated. So for me, and it's really just finding midway points. So if I use the FIB tool here and, and drag it from the top of that range to the bottom of this range, what I'm looking for is this midpoint. Um, so that's a 0.5. So that's a halfway point of that trading range. So when we get down here, we know that we've, we've, you know, we're, I would expect some sort of, probably some sort of reversal here at this moment. Uh, the other thing that I noticed here when I, when I was looking at this yesterday is, and I actually drew this on the chart, is you'll notice here, this fair value gap. And if, you, if you're trading in other systems, it's sometimes referred to as imbalance. Um, but that fair value gap for me is most likely going to fill at some point. So when I was looking at this last night, even though we've gone past the halfway point of this trading range, I did have a feeling that the price may get drawn down towards this fair value gap and, and possibly over in the next couple of days, we might see this fill out. Um, so I, I, was, I had a downward bias or a short bias last night when I was trading and I was looking for possible setups to move this way. Um, so that's on the daily chart. So that was my initial thoughts. If we get into the 15 minute chart here, and I'll just reset this. I'm gonna show you what the chart looked like before that, that I started to look. So the way I've got my chart set up here, I've got an actual an indicator called Sessions Nephew Sam, and I've got it based on the times that uh, Mike in the, in the ICT Trader system uses. He, he focuses or suggests to focus on trading uh, from 8.30 a.m. New York time uh, through to the lunch hour, so through to 12, um, and for really to look for trade setups only between that 8.30 and 11 o'clock time frame. So I've got the Nessions, this, this session's nephew Sam indicator um, set so that I've, I've actually set the times in this so that I've got don't worry about where it says London session time, New York session time, etc. All I've done is I've said that's the time frame, and I'm in Australia at the moment, so I've had to set these times to, you know, work for Australian times. However, what you'll notice that I've actually got my, and you'll notice down the bottom here, I've got my time frame set to the New York time. Um, so when I put these settings in, though, this gives me the market times that I want to look at. So the nice thing about this is from there, that's 8:30 in the morning New York time. And then this red area shows you the lunch hour, and then the, this is the afternoon session. So I personally only tend to trade, um, I get up and, and trade from 8.30 in the morning, uh, New York time, and I look for trades through to about 10 or 11 o'clock. And at about 11 o'clock is when I when I stop trading generally in, in New York time. And that's, that's what I'm doing at the moment, and it's working reasonably well for me so far. Um, one of the things that um, the guy from ICT Trader talks about doing, as well as when you're looking at your setting your charts up for the for the session, is draw a line. And I'm just going to move this fib for a second so it doesn't get in the way of what we're talking about. I'll just delete that for the time being. Um, what he does is he suggests that you won't want to mark off the time at midnight. Okay. So what I've done here is you'll notice that I've put this green line here, uh, just there, which is the opening or the price at midnight and you notice that that, that particular candle came down um, and I put a mark there you know the price at midnight New York time which happened to be 1392 sorry 1392 3.75 and I'll just mark that and then at 830 what's the opening price at 830 which happened to be 1404 6.5 so that's just one of the things that he suggests to do and what it does do is it allows you to get some sort of start to have a look at see how our price action is moving and he does a video on the um i think calls it refers to it as a power of three where you often see that the price will do this um, the price might open it might go up and then come down and then close like this so oftentimes you'll see candles do that and interestingly enough when you look at the price action that's happened over this last 12 hour period or so you notice that um, from midnight, so the price came down a touch, came up, 
and then came back down here and actually reversed, came right back below that again. So it was an interesting movement last night. But remembering that I was looking for short trades particularly. Now I got caught out last night. I ended up, um, so this is my 15, oh, sorry, don't get in front of myself. So that was my, my initial setup. So that's all I do initially is I draw those two lines there. Now you'll notice up here, I've also got a couple of other things drawn in my chart, which was a trading range that I identified on the daily, I'm pretty sure I picked that up. So I look back in time and I noticed that if price were to be drawn up, what's so that's an interesting point of interest for me. So this there is the base of that previously daily candle here and that there. So I just wanted to mark that off to see if how price would behave if it came up to those points. Um, and obviously we're interested in what's going to happen down here. So I did mark those off yesterday as well. Um, because I thought if price does come up, um, I'm interested to see what it, what it does around those two areas. And it was really interesting last night because it really respected those those levels that those previous levels price had gone to, you know, two weeks ago or so. So that was on the 15 minute chart. Now, because I have my chart set up this way, it allows me to be looking at all time frames as the price moves. So as you can imagine, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the five minute, the three minute, the one minute, and I'm looking for particular setups. So ICT Trader, basically what he's looking for or suggests, and once again, I'd really strongly suggest you go and have a look at his videos, watch his mentorship, and um, he, he is the original source of his trading style. Um, but when I was trading last night, one of the things I noticed uh, initially, and this is this is probably got a little bit overzealous with my trading here, um, I was looking at, I did initial long, and I got, I got stopped out. And so, have a look here so when you look at this that's on the three minute and I'll even go down to the lower time frame let's go down to the one minute for a second and you'll see in trading view nice thing about trading view is that it actually shows you um, where you place your trades not not to the detail you, that I love however you know you notice these little tiny arrows that are on the chart here it shows you where trades were taken and so for me I actually sorry I was I was short bias remember so you'll notice here that there was a there was a short trade placed there and then I got stopped out here. So my first trade for the night, I actually took a trade position um, on this candle here because this was, this, I looked at that as a fair value gap. Price broke down through, so price came down, broke down, there was market structure shift. And then I just assumed here, this is going to be a good point where I might be able to take a short position because I just assumed this was going to happen. That's what was going to happen with price. That's what I was looking for. Um, I actually had my stop set just above this area and I got stopped out. So I got in on this candle here and that was my fair value gap which was my entry point. Unfortunately price kept on going up and it broke through and hit that area so I was a little bit too tight with my stop um, and got stopped out on that first trade. However I was, I, was, I was still watching this because you'll notice on this candle up here we've still got a fair value gap up this area so I was watching price to see what it did. Now interestingly enough you'll also notice that that was that previous level that I marked off from about two weeks ago so I knew that was going to be an interesting point and if it if price respected that previous level um, and also we've got this fair value gap here to fill it's going to be interesting to see what happens so I didn't give up on the bias because my bias is still um, short and, and sure enough we've had this we've had a massive market market shift here so price broke down came right down to this level <clears throat> moved up and when price actually got up to this level here I actually took another short so I placed another short just here when price broke through that level now I then placed my stop at about this level here so I was I took a bit of heat on this trade a little bit nervous I was you know emotions getting better of me there for a few moments I almost just cut the trade short however I stuck to the plan and my stop was sitting up at this level um, I was down about um, I only trade one micro e-mini at the moment, um, so I'm very small time. However, th this was a little bit scary moment, but I just sat in the trade and I targeted, I'll show you how I worked out what my target was. So if I scroll back a little bit on this, and well, this is one of the things that uh, ICT Trading works through with people, if I draw a fib from the top of this trading range to the bottom of the range, so that's the top through to the bottom of the trading range and mark and note where the 50% level is. So the 50% level is effectively here. Okay, so if I'm looking at the market structure here and I've placed a trade up in this moment, 
if we can get past this, we're getting pretty close to, to the 50% range. So for me, that's a really conservative target that I'd want to be looking for. So I actually placed my stop just below, or sorry, my target just below that area. Um, took a while, I was in this trade for, I can't remember, maybe half an hour to an hour roughly. Um, got, took a bit of heat up here and it just slowly worked its way down. Um, I, I, I cut the trade about that point and I was pretty happy with that to take some profit. Um, but interestingly enough, if you're using his approach and in an ideal world, if my account was large enough, you would take two contracts here. So for me, I'd take two there. I would try and take one out there and then I'd probably target down this area for my second or around this area here for my second, which is you know trying to take out the stops that are down here. So if you took one out here and then the second one out there, you've got a really nice setup there. Uh, but the downside of this is you would have had to wait it through the lunch break and then watch this step. And it did actually play out exactly as as the trade plan would have would have done. Um, but yeah, that, that was that was an interesting trade last night. So I was pretty stoked with last night's trade. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll show you the, the stats on that at the moment. So I'll just go through that one more time. On this particular setup we were looking as I said before this is we've we've got a, a market structure shift in here the price came right back and filled and closed that fair value gap that was my entry stop was placed just here and my target was just there as a conservative target hit my target trade over thank you very much so nice I think that was roughly I'll show you in a second, it's, a couple, it's probably $200 profit trade that trade. And if you'd still be able to say, it, and the nice thing about this is if you've got your entry up here, and if you'd place your original two contracts, you've taken one out here, and once you've placed, once you hit that initial target, you could actually move your stop um, to just be, be in front of your entry. So even if it came back and hit, took you back out, you, you really haven't lost anything. Um, so unfortunately, um, my account's not big enough to make, make those type of trades with two contracts. However, at the moment, I'm just trading with one. So. I just want to quickly show you the results. So I trade with Trade of Eight. So I actually use Trading View for my charts, and I actually tra place my trades through Trading View. I don't even open up the Trade of Eight um, interface at all. Um, it's a, it's an awesome setup. I'm trading currently the June contracts for futures, and you'll notice down here I've got that. It's my current account balance. Um, I oops, I've just quit out of Trading View. Um, well, when I come back into come across to Trade of 8 as an app, you'll notice it gives you a lot more information. I love this feature in Trade of 8. They've got a thing called the uh, Performance Center. Um, and the Performance Center, you can actually look at a whole bunch of information. So I'll just get out of that. So I'll show you, this is the normal interface. And I've set up a little widget here called the Performance Center. If you click on it, I'm gonna make that go full screen. So I don't personally trade at all within the Trade of 8 app any longer. I do it all through trade, um, Trading View and place my trades on chart, which I love. Um, however, if I want to go and review my results, I come into the Performance Center. I want to look at the statistics over the last um, 24 hours. So we're going to change the range. Let's go to our custom range here. We're going to go from yesterday to today. Go. That's my results from last night's trading session. So as I said before, I'm a pretty small time trader. I've only got a small account. However, I had a gross profit of $152 for the nights for those two fundamental trades. Um, these are the ins and outs of those two trades. However, the, you'll notice that the stats are down here. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that the first trade I took was a $19 gain. Uh, the second was a hundred dollar loss and then the last trade was a two hundred thirty three dollar gain So that's the winner obviously and that's a really conservative target. I was in that trade for 57 minutes um, uh, Which is interesting to see and then I also had a four minute loss there for the trade that I lost So I lost a hundred dollars in that trade that went the wrong way and then I had a nice big gain of 233 So that's pretty cool. I was pretty happy with those results and I thought I might as well share with everyone where I'm at with my current trading strategies. So last but not least, strongly recommend checking out the Inner Circle Trader. Great web, great YouTube series, and particularly focusing on this series here, which is the 2022 mentorship. I'm learning heaps from that series, and I'd highly recommend it, particularly if you're interested in trading futures 
or Forex as well. He covers Forex trading as well. So I hope that was enjoyable. I'll, I'll share some other updates over the next month or two as I go. My goal really is I want to get my account up until I'm starting to be consistently profitable. That's part of the reason I haven't really been doing many trading videos because I don't want to be a fraud and I hate it when people share things when they're not successful themselves. So for me, um, until I become really consistently profitable, I probably am not going to do a whole bunch of trading videos except for when I you know, learn something in particular that I want to share with other people that I think might be beneficial. So I hope that was great. Um, uh, nice to um, put another video up. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. And um, that's all I've got to say. For, so bye for now.